Hi everyone, can you hear me? All right. Thank you for uh, coming to this session. Hopefully I won't make your 30 minutes go waste. Uh, I'm Vijay, Vijay Chandra, and um, I'm part of uh, Drupal Core, especially the topic that we're gonna discuss here. Uh, I spent some contribution on this front. Um, before we start this one, how many of you had any test run failure because config schema issue in DA? Awesome. So it's not a lot of people because, you know, otherwise they would hit me because kind of I did a lot of config in my stuff and uh, probably you can't blame me for all. Alex Pot did part of the strict test. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can beat me half. Um, okay. So before, so the, the structure is basically it's like a 25 minutes and we kind of doing like a lightning talk session type thing, like just explaining what it is. And a bit of disclaimer is I kind of extracted the type data bit from other core components. So you might not find exactly what we are seeing here in the core when you go and look at the code base. But just to you know make it more clear and you know abstract rather than putting everything together and you know discuss further. Um, so do I need config schema or uh, type data? Uh, when, if, I, if you develop a project. Uh, before we answer the question, a uh, few examples. So this is a module called Config Translation Module, and uh, it's, it's part of Drupal 8 core. Uh, as you can see here, what it does is every configuration, either your module-specific settings or any, anything that you can think of config, like fields, uh, data type, everything, all the configurations, you can, if you enable the module, you get a tab, something like this, or a drop-down menu that says translate, and when you click that one, it just goes to a different form where you have a similar element, but kind of a subset of it, uh, and this is using the, the type data slash config schema that we are discussing today. So that's just to give you an idea of what it does uh, in a, you know, not like a proper idea, but kind of tells you it can do a lot of magical stuff. Um, and it generates the whole form from the form that you created. And the people who felt very bad about config schema test failure, the config schema is the one running behind this translation form and telling the system what are the fields I need to, de I can be translated, or it can be translated. So uh, the type data is all about the metadata, or meta details about um, various, uh, you know, sub-components or content-specific components, specific config-specific components in the code. Um, that's one example. And uh, this is a search API. So this is a contributed module search API, which is used by Solar uh, and a few other searching providers. They, they use the config uh, type data for defining or uh, kind of uh, mapping what are the different type of data that you are storing in the, um, you know, your solar. Uh, so this way you have a more clarity on, uh, you know, what you are saving in the search system so that when you search for certain things, you know, you are, you have a better understanding of the data stored in solar. Uh, and this is a core search API module implementation and uh, all the other service provider like Apache Solar, they kind of use this API to extend it. Third one, and uh, this is again a con uh, contributor module called Config Views. Um, what this module is doing is, as you can see, this module allows you to create views per config type. So the list that you see on the other side, that tells you you can create a view of data for date format. You can create a view of um, you know, custom block revisions. So the, this module provides a view plugin to all the configuration, config entities that you have in your system. So we are talking about creating a views of views because views is a config entity. So we're talking about view shopshan, you know, like you can go, <laughs> go and create multiple views of a views. And, and that's just a one example. And uh, this module out of box replace something like a 12 admin pages as views, admin config pages as views. Uh, so like I said, it's kind of a magic how we can do these things, but it's all possible because of the type data and config schema. 
and this is a, one of the kind of a use case or real, maybe not real, real, but kind of example how this could change your admin UI. This is a, a content type page where you have your content type and also a list of menus and also you have a taxonomy and content. This is a view and you attach view blocks because you can create a configuration views, you attach those blocks and imagine you have a department where they have a set of things they need to work together like a set of menus and set of content types and few content. This could be their landing page. And because it's a view, you have all other goodies coming out, like caching, permissions, role-specific restrictions, and everything. So we kind of saying, like, you can create a multiple view display. That means all the people visit the same URL, but they get to see different, you know, different layout or different set of components in that page. Um, so now back to kind of, you know, theory part. So these are all the things done by type data. So now what is type data? So this slide kind of gives you a simplest idea of type data. Type data in a in, in very basic level is nothing but a data type. Uh, you remember we used to say like, oh, PHP is so cool because you don't need to know what type of data that you have in a particular variable. Uh, that's cool. Maybe if you're writing a one single page, you know, one single PHP file, but system like Drupal 8 or even Drupal 7, when you go to the level of creating a lot of objects, a lot of different, uh, you know, like a high complex system, it get very complicated, especially with the performance and also with kind of your understanding of the system itself. So type data is a, a kind of an approach in Drupal 8 core to introduce data type to various components or various data. So, okay. so whenever we talk about data in Drupal 7, it kind of end up talking about entity or, you know, this is another kind of probably we need to have a session like a, what is data in, in Drupal world? Like, you know, up to say Drupal 6, we didn't have a concept of entity, so node is kind of handled in a special way and uh, user is a different, you know, special thing, block is a separate thing. When it comes to Drupal 8, we brought everything under, or Drupal 7, we brought most of them content under entity, and the config becomes still a special thing. Uh, when it came to Drupal 8, we brought everything under entity, and we just divided two categories, config entities, content entities. So when you come to that level, then you need to know what type of data that you are dealing in different places, because you know, you're in a very higher level. So uh, this is the, you know, the, this is the problem that currently we have and the type data trying to solve. So if you have an entity and you are trying to save a status, the status field is a Boolean field, but the Boolean value can be assigned in a very, you know, like a thousand different ways. You can, you can just say quotes one or, you know, like that means true, and also you can just say one or you can say true, or you can say is that like a, returning a, PHP core function written value, or you can give something from your user-defined value. And uh, we know how we are when we define a function. We, we, we you know, uh, Larry Garfield, like he had a session two years back explaining how you should keep each method or function to return, you know, try to return one particular type all the time. If it is an array, never written null or, you know, like a empty, just return empty array, so that you don't need to check when you call that function place, you don't need to, you can do for each all the time, uh, it doesn't fail. So something like that, you can return a function and that can return a null or a, even a Boolean value and then PHP kind of magically figure it out, depending on the operation that you are trying to do, it just decide whether it, you know, Boolean value or not. So, so but this is probably okay for one element, but if you think of an entity, you have a, you know, you have a big object entity, and then you have fields, and each fields kind of having their own type. Like one is string, another one is image, which is having its own set of fields, which is a list type, and then you just having a, each list type, each item in the list type, which is field, having its own type, right? So now we are trying to get like what is data type. So we are just defining, uh, basics types that is coming out of core, like a string, integers, and uh, uh, 
Boolean and other values. Uh, and then on top of it, because we are defining in a Drupal or a, in a framework level, not language level, we have flexibility to extend to a complex data types as well, like entities, fields, or you know, anything that you can think of in the core, or even in your custom entity, you can think of, you can, you can define the type. And also it provides a way of saying certain things that we uh, define differently. For example, phone number, it is still a number or numeric value in terms of type, but we, we, you know, we treat them differently. So this is how our, for example, iPhone keyboard appears depending on whether it is a text field or a numeric field or a phone field, you know, like a providing a context of same data type, but, uh, you know, we treat them or we kind of handle them in a different way. So all these things are defined by the typed data, which is available in core. Okay, now back to, okay, we kind of know what is type data, okay? We are defining data types, and, but we are not stopping at very basic level. We are defining everything that's available in the core system that handles data, we're defining as a separate type so that we get more context of what it does and how it is implemented. This is another best part of Drupal 8 core. Uh, everything that you see, everything that you hear in terms of concept, they all do different things, but the implementation point of view, they all follow same thing plugin system. So type data is nothing but a plugin. Um, so you define the type data like a list, email, URI. They are all defined as a type data plugin. And then you have an option to say the definition class. The definition class is basically the data, how you handle the data inside a type. And then you can even add constraints like a, um, a symphony constraint component, like the validation component. Uh, so if you look at email type, it has an email validation on the type itself. So whenever you try to use the data, it automatically kind of does the validation magically inside there. So you just, uh, you, all you need to add is on this uh, definition, you just say constraint, and you add a list of constraints that you want to validate with. Um, so it's a plugin, and it has a uh, type data manager. The type data manager, like any other plugin, it's a manager just discover all the different type of di type data plus the data definition, and it keeps them as a uh, you know, service so that you can consume anywhere you want to do various things. Um, one of the example I didn't show in the previous one is in the core is um, when you when you save a form, the one I showed you, like a settings form or anything, uh, the form value getting validated by type data, and it gets saved in your um, in your um, um, config file. Say if you have a settings file, and the config the data that you enter, the text will always sends as a string, but using the config schema, we are validating the type and we are saving back with that type using you know type casting type thing in a very basic level, but there are like quite a bit of complex bit going on. But at the end, that's what happened. It just, we load the config schema, we load the config data, and we just compare what data you're providing, and we do a typecasting to know, okay, this field, uh, the UI is saying quotation one, but it is a Boolean value, so I'm going to make it as a true. So it just save it as a true. So it keeps a more consistent config every time when you do the changes on your site. Right, and uh, yeah, so like I said, you can define properties and you, do, you define validations and also data definition. And this is also applicable more for your custom entity. So now you can, you can think of your entities or anything that you are building on top of core, you can really differentiate or you can really define the type so that you will have a better understanding of, you know, like your domain level, say stations or, uh, you know, cities, like then it can, it can be a separate type and you can handle them in a different way. And uh, we have a few interfaces here. So the type data interface is a basic interface that you implement when you need to implement a new type and uh, that, that get extended to a complex data type. So the complex data types are example is entities, kind of complex data type. You have a, uh, you know, like a name to properties and you have like, you know, get set methods, everything out of box coming from the complex data type and all you just, you know, kind of deal with it is, uh, and also because the complex data type kind of holds the individual one, like uh, say if you have an entity which has a field, then the field is a list 
uh, interface. So internally, entity knows it kind of dedicate the operation, what field needs to do to its own type. It doesn't try to do everything by itself. Um, and then you have primitive interface, which is kind of we spoke about like handling URLs. It's a string, but you have a special treatment for URL. Uh, same goes with the timestamp. Um, and then the list interface is more used in the field, like when you have multiple instances of you know, data on a field. And the, the, that, that's for the data type definition, and this is for the data definition. Data definition, same thing. You have a interface, and you have a common interface, and then individual item-specific uh, inter definition. And those, def those definitions kind of define how your data is interacting, but what kind of values are available for, for your type. So it just tells uh, that type is more of a structural, uh, and the definition is more of how you interact with the data when you put it in the structure. Right. So as of now, whatever we discussed, like most of the things that we discussed are more content entities based, right? Like a field, entities, whenever we say entities, probably uh, we kind of meant content entities, like the user entering data. Uh, but so for that, you have a field level uh, and you're defining the type, so you kind of know what type the field or what type that entity. So you, you get everything kind of as part of the different system, right? Like entity, different system, field is a different system. Uh, what happened to config? So all the configuration, in a way, it's getting saved in the YAML file, and then uh, you use the configuration, uh, like the custom configuration or basic simple configurations like settings, you handle them in the form, right? Config form, you just save the data uh, into the, you know, like the config get, config set, but on the, the system build like a fields, entities, or a, you know, like a block type or taxonomy, those things are kind of system handles it, like they save it, but still it's all flat YAML file configuration, and we use different state data storage like database or YAML depending on your, uh, you know, needs, but at the end it's a flat configuration. So how do we, how do we define, or how do we tell that that flat file metadata to the system. So that's when the config schema come in place. Um, and uh, I kind of gave a presentation about config schema and someone was asking like, I'm not sure what, what config schema is. So I just tried to come up with a kind of a simple example. Uh, so if you have used hook underscore schema in D7, you might kind of familiar with the, this side. So you have a table, and if you need to add a table, then you define a hook underscore schema where you specify all the fields and the meta details about the field, what that field is, uh, field is all about, what it's holding, and what is the length, whether it can be null or not. Um, it, the config schema is exactly the same. Uh, only difference is it's a YAML file. So this is a user.settings.ml file where you have like a five different configuration like for anonymous user, I think it's a label of anonymous user, uh, how, how it should say it, and then and the registration, whether they, anyone can register or it should be someone, something like that, only admin can register. All, this configuration is defined, like the metadata or details about this configuration is defined using config schema. And uh, currently, like I said, the config translation module using only one property here, the type property. The type label means it is translatable, uh, but type string means it's not translatable. So string, when we say string, you can imagine machine names or you know, anything that you, you, wouldn't, like a, you, you wouldn't put it in a UI. That's all kind of non-translatable. So if you see the register, that's a string value, so you won't able to translate that one. Uh, but the label can be translated, and then text. We don't have an example for text here, but the text also, uh, you know, can be translatable. Uh, but that that's just a one bit. Like that's just a core way of using it. But it can be extended to whatever the use case that you are defining. Like you can add additional meta property to that to to you know to your use case, which is which is again still open. Like what you're gonna build is something. You know, you need to think in this level and add some property that that you can provide so that you can use it for your system. Um, so this is uh, this is all about configs. Uh, you know, like a more for the configuration in the system. So this is why we started providing um, config schema 
so that uh, if you look at the core, you have all the fields and uh, everywhere. Like it's not, it may not be a one single file. We defined individual part of the configuration in different uh, structure. So it may not look like this easy, but it, the bottom line is just same. It just get composed together and then it used for you know your translation and various other use cases we saw before. Right. So benefits again. This this is very kind of a, not a solid list of items that we are talking about here. The benefit is more we are uh, saying in a way um, what we know right now. That is the benefit of config uh, schema and type data. Uh, it's a, it's, it gives a lot of visibility of what your um, you know, like uh, what you're dealing with. And also it provides behaviors in terms of translation. And the developer experience is basically uh, giving a chain commands where you call multiple elements and uh, you provide uh, a different methods uh, when you talk about uh, chain of entity, get type, and then get value, and then get element, you know, stuff like that. So that developer experience is purely depending on the type data. Uh, and then the the validation is another pure thing, which is core doesn't have a lot of it. Um, so we have only for very few basic ones, but you can add the symphony constraint components, like extend the components to individual use cases and validations, and you would be able to provide your own type with the constraints. So you won't you don't really need to add a separate validation for your data. Once you define it in your uh, uh, type itself, it automatically does the validation as part of saving the data. So that's something we can look for. And then the type as in config one, which is, which is something I mentioned, like every time you can't save a config form, uh, which could be any generic config or a creating a field or a, you know type like that. So it automatically typecasts the value, validating the config schema, and then it just saves the data, which provides a lot of consistency. And also, I think we do ordering as well. Like if you look at the YAML, file, uh, the order also maintained using the, uh, you know, the config schemas order, so that when you change, when you, when you, when you make changes, it doesn't, uh, you know, uh, uh, change the order, and then when you try to move the config from one environment to another environment, you see a lot of things are changing, uh, but ideally just moved places, right? So the config schema is kind of used for ordering the individual elements as well. And then, yeah, like I said, the translate the default configurations, which is you know config translation module, which is out of box, and I put all the references in, especially the code references where you can see exactly what config schema um, you know used or type data is used uh, on different uh, projects. Uh, I I didn't add, oh, okay I have it the Lullabot. Uh, article is amazing one uh, if you want to, and then the Drupal dot, uh, Drupal dot org uh, documentation is also very good for um, you know having a go through. Like uh, like I said, config the both type data and config schema are kind of a m massive powerful system that we have in core, but. I believe it's not explored that much, but I might be wrong here, but uh, if you explore it, you would be able to do a lot of amazing things. And uh, like today's discussion, uh, like a keynote, Dries mentioned about, uh, you know, that creating a, a decoupled admin UI, config schema or type data would be playing a big role on that. So you can expose your configuration as an API, uh, and then that can be, you know, like that's all possible only, you know, by using the type data to provide the meta details about your API, what you need to provide to save certain configuration. As of now, most of the uh, decoupled or um, headless Drupals are like just exposing the content, um, mostly read only, some of them write as well, but it's just a content entity level. Uh, but type data can help to extend that API to more you know, like a making more Drupal fully headless, and then you can have even whole admin UI uh, as a separate, you, you know, like separate uh, JavaScript framework. Um, and I believe that's pretty much it. And this is about uh, generic uh, code sprint stuff. And uh, yeah, take a survey, and uh, if you if you think it's good, we will do it again. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, any questions? Seems like I would be the first one having 30 minute session and 10 minutes for questions. But <laughs> <laughs> Hi, is this on? Um, it looks to me like um, this would be a great um, solution for uh, what used to be in Drupal 7, your config form, where you just say, here's my configs, please expose them, or I build a form with form API and save them, because you know how to save them. Uh, it, I've failed to find um, the API or the hooks that say, given a schema, build me a form. Yep. It looks like that's available. Yep. Uh, can you tell me where to find it? <laughs> So this is a kind of a future project like no one had tried. Uh, I was talking to Tim Plunkett this morning, asking him if he can do, and I don't know, probably this week we can try. So ideally, you should be, with the config schema and config, you should be able to build a farm without creating a custom config bomb by yourself, and especially the saving part that you said. So that we could try having a, say, path in your settings itself, saying this is the path I want to have a configuration, and then use the config schema and configuration just to generate the form. Like if I say the type is label, give a text field. If I say type is text, give a text box. Uh, but as of now, we don't have it. <laughs> so, but yeah, but, but definitely it is something that we can try. Like it's something we thought about it, but I don't think anyone tried. Okay, thank you. It just looked so obvious. I can I can see the pieces fitting together, yeah, but yeah. it doesn't exist yet. Yeah, and, and it, okay, can, thank you. it can go more than D7, right? D7, you don't have only the submit handler, right? So submit handler automatically taken care by saving to variables table. Whereas in D8, you don't even need to write form. I mean, unless you need a type, type you know, like a field set or something to group them together, then maybe. But uh, all these things we kind of need to figure out. But definitely we can do a basic one. Thanks, everyone.